I use Joe Joe Temperley a lot in the in the slow sections of that because he has such a singing and beautiful sound, and he can get that type of romantic feeling uh, easily on his horn. And the uh, the second movement also is we we're, we're playing using the Chaucer rhythm and putting it on a lot of different beats. And Ali is playing. He's supposed to play trick drums in that. We got to get that together just how we're going to use the different. Uh, that's more like the showbiz kind of aspect of jazz, junk aspect of where people be hitting trash cans and that kind of stuff. But next time when we record it, I'm going to get him to get like a junk set and play on that. Um, I like that whole kind of entertainment industry feel of our music. And if people took those things, those kazoos and the trinkets and the baubles and all of that, and they turned it into an art by where they would place things on the beat and the timing and the kind of advanced tap tap dance kind of concept. So we take the dit, we take the, the, the Charleston rhythm, dit, 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 bop, bop, beep, beep, bop, 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 throwing myself off. But we, we bounce around on, on different beats and we juxtapose it. And it also has the woodwind section playing and uh, the strings all interpreting the, the language and the vocabulary. It's still straight eighth note music against that, that Charleston rhythm. And the, uh, the second movement ends real big, like with kind of George M. Cohan type of feeling. Uncle Sam, pro-American, very upbeat, uplifting, just over the top, optimism and big kind of brash feeling the open skies and all the, the, the all of those types of things that are a part of our, our mythology and a part of our 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 psyche. Third movement, we go to Kansas City Swing. It's a big call and response, like what the Basie Band would do when they came out of Kansas City. The brass versus the strings versus the the uh, the reeds, and it's, it, it's, it's all, all mixed up. I mixed the call and response. Then it features saxophones. Walter plays mainly like the Lester Young and Vic plays. Of course, they play in their own style, but I'm just referring to these things and saying these things are in our music. The backgrounds are the call and response with us, Wild Wine and the strings and the, and the woodwinds. Uh, holding kind of a placid thing. We, we have breaks on the bridge, try to keep the breaks going. The whole symphony, I have featured breaks because the break is a, a component of jazz that uh, is carried over in the music from the very beginning. It's like a musical moment of truth. Everybody stops and you're left to carry the whole feeling and the sound of the group by yourself. The uh, See, then we come together, we go to the section about Coleman Hawkins, five, five saxophone voicing. Kind of my style of voicing is very different from the style that Duke used or Benny Carter. I, I don't I don't know if there's no, no name for it. It's just my way of working with the kind of dissonances and the half steps. I change the leads a lot. Like it, in our section, Sherman is playing the lead sometimes, sometimes uh, Vic sometimes. Only the baritone I don't think ever plays the lead in this. The rest of the horns all get a chance playing lead. And it, it's like a call and response between the saxophone section and the cellos, the cello section, because cause Hawk played the cello. And I just wanted to... And his, his variations on Body and Soul were famous. These are kind of my variations on it, very kind of complicated, bouncing up and down. In this symphony in general, I don't have that much repetition, almost none, because I feel that the harmonic form is rep repetitive. So if I have a repetitive harmonic form and I keep going back to the same melodic information, it just seems, seems like it would be a lot of too much repetition for my taste. Then we leave that and we go to the, it's like a, it sets up a kind of love making, kind of love feel, and then we go immediately to something primitive. And that's up because that's that aspect of love making that's always uh, the most interesting part of it. That you can go from the most refined to the most primitive at the drop of a hat. And then you actually are getting to something. So we go to the kind of doom, uh, the, the kind of uh, parade, quasi Brazilian, New Orleans feel with the percussion. And uh, we didn't use the whistle this time. I'm going to put that whistle back in there. I like the sound of that whistle. The whistle always makes you happy. And. Uh, we use the form of sing, 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 and we go from that to swing. Then we start to swing all of the whole ensembles together. Uh, through that, and it features a clarinet solo for Benny Goodman and the trumpet solo because the trumpet player soloed on the original sing, sing, sing. Ryan and Marcus play with different mutes, and Ted and Victor swap off with the uh, the clarinet solos. I got the vibes in there for Hamp and. Um, what else do we do there? We have a kind of chant that we started off, kind of primitive chant, and there's timpani solo and some drum solos, and then we uh, we take it out with a big ensemble swing section where we're all playing together. It's the first time we all really fall into the swing groove. I have the basses walking and the cello and the, and the violas chum, 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 playing the guitar, and we're all doubling it. So call and response, 
and then uh, we ended with the chant. And that's because we started with that chant. In the beginning of the first one, we start with a kind of quasi-primitive chant. And now we end this movement returning to that same chant. And then we go to a bebop, which features the trumpet section for Dizzy. Really difficult, virtuosic. And then into something that has the, the, the score in the case for the string says a la hot club of, of France. Stefan Grappelli, Django Reinhardt, the kind of choo, 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 hard driving swing that they were that they made famous that comes out of uh, of that sound of the earlier music and of the bebop music. And um breaks, Dizzy and Bird, of course, played on breaks all the time. A lot of breaks, Ali playing, a la Max Roach, sometimes a la Big Sid Cat, that we try to keep the tradition of the drums in there. Then we go to the Mambo. Uh, my man Papo Vasquez helped me get my make sure my stuff was not uh, corny and Carlos also to get my my, my bass lines and all the right feeling on it to uh, homage to 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 Machito and Chico Farrell and all the great musicians uh, in that tradition which is a part of our music and is a part of the of the swing features a trumpet solo Carlos is soloing on that of course that's our man he's kind of the modern uh, younger embodiment of that tradition of that and the, the bringing together of that in jazz he actually plays all the traditions so well and uh in his music the music he writes and arranges he's like the the the, the next generation of thinking in that style and um uh, from that we go to uh bijou sherman it's just a sweet ballad just on the ballads i'm just trying to be as sweet as i can and as direct and straightforward nothing fancy trying to get to the point just like what you got to do when you when you're in those late night moments you don't want too much subterfuge. You're trying to get right to something of immediate and timeless meaning. And uh, you don't want to mess with that too much. That's the thing that's very hard to mess up, but it can be if you try, if you start avoiding fundamentals. And then uh, the fifth movement was a fugue. It goes all through the different horns and the oboes and the winds. And uh, do be biddy it up. It's kind of the main theme. It's based on do dee 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 do dee 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 the first theme that we started with. And um, from that, we go to the bass section, soloing on, on, on that with the woodwinds down low in their register, kind of crooning on something. Uh, just, a, just, a, just a background, t terse kind of harmonies. Uh, I always love that progression on Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. It's very insightful harmonies that Mingus uh, invented for us. And uh, with the Swing Symphony in this way, I'm trying to co-sign one of the great things that jazz musicians do, which is theme and variations always on other people's songs. It's really a democratic thing to me. It's not so much that you can't come up with your own material, because most of the composers who wrote the most successful songs on like, chord progressions to someone else's tunes, like a Duke Ellington or Thelonious Monk, they, could write, they wrote a lot of their own music with, the, with their own progressions. It's just that it's fun to do, and it gives us a taking off point and a reference point. It kind of closes the ranks around our music. It allows us to, it, it unifies our music and it brings other worlds in. Um, it was a way for jazz musicians to bring the world of the American popular song into the world of jazz and the, and the entire music was strengthened by that.